film I've picked is a completely different one. It's a film called Man on the Moon starring Jim Carrey. Now, it's a story of a bloke who was a household name in America, not so much in Australia. Um, he was uh, he was a star of uh, one of the stars of the TV show back in the 70s, Andy Kaufman. Yeah. Taxi. Well, taxi. He was in Taxi. Taxi, yes. Yeah. And he's a difficult... Difficult guy to define. He was a comedian, he was an actor, he was a writer. He called himself a professional wrestler as well, which he did a little bit. People, wow. He was always... A, it, the lines between reality and fiction were always blurred with Kaufman. Um, a really complex bloke. Uh, he, was a, he was a man of, who had many personas. His most famous alter ego persona was Tony Clifton. And Tony Clifton was probably everything Andy wasn't. Insensitive, obnoxious, loud lounge singer, mm. and people would oftentimes confuse Tony and Andy. That there was a debate going on: Is Tony Clifton the real guy? Yeah, or is, Andy yeah. Co- is Andy Kaufman? You know, is, is he is he the alter ego? They couldn't work it out. So, as a time in my career, um, I'm, I'm, I'm one day around lunchtime, I'm lying in my hotel bed. Next to me in the other bed is Mark Hughes. And we're waiting to play North Queensland Cowboys that later that day. And the film Man on the Moon comes on. And now at that point in my career, I was at, I, I was at a real low point in my career. I was playing ordinary. On top of that, I think personally I was going through a difficult period. Um, Rumours going around the papers that the Knights were about to flick me and go overseas. That was in the papers, a lot, a lot of the Newcastle news reports. I knew it was coming. And I, just generally I felt the walls start to close in. Mm. And... And I'm looking, I'm looking for a way to escape the pressure. You know, yoga, no. You know, um, reading, no, not really. Alcohol, yes. Mm. Um, so I'm watching the film, and I watch how Kaufman invents him, himself different personas to escape from himself. So at that point, I think, yep, yeah, I need a holiday away from myself. So I sit there and go, I'm going to invent myself a new persona, and I can't come up with a fella called Red Dragon. Wow. So Red Dragon, I think to myself, he's going to be everything that I'm not. I sort of, you know, I, he's going to be totally obnoxious. Some Rude. people say, well, yeah. <laughs> and he's just can't. So no comment. I come up, yeah, I know. People say, well, hang on, where's the lines here? But I, I, I decide, right, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give this a crack. So that day we play the Cowboys. Before the game, I, I do, a Chief's not playing, I'm captain that day, and I give the boys a pregame speech as Red Dragon. And they're going, What's going on here? What? Half time I go in there and I give them the talk as Red Dragon. Did you play as Rich? And, mate, I got man of the match. So I come off after the game. <laughs> now, I know. <laughs> I wasn't Life going that good. Moment. <laughs> I know. And I, think, I, should, I should have done this 20 years ago. So I, I get there after the game and I said, well, this is working. I'm going to keep at it. So I think I, I, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure it was Steve Mascord who comes up to me in the Townsville dressing room. It might have been someone else. I'm sure it was Mascord. He says, Matty, you know, no, 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 it's not Matty. Matty Maddie, Maddie's back in Newcastle. Red Dragon. Mascord's probably the only general that would have understood that. <laughs> well, Mascord just went, <laughs> okay, I'll go Reggie? with it. <laughs> so the next day, um, it was something, the headline was something like, no laughing matter, mm. Red Dragon steps up to the plate. Mm. And it just went from there. Now, the walk at first loved it. Until every single day of training in the next six weeks, I, t- I turned up at Red Dragon. Yeah. And he'd be like, mate, no, 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 no. Hey, listen, listen, none of that bullshit, none of that bullshit. None and he'd go, Matthew, okay. and I'd say, no, no, it's, it's Reg. Really? And he'd go, no, 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 it's bullshit. It's bullshit. Come on, mate, I want to have a serious chat. I said, that's fine. Have a serious chat. Have a chat to me. My name's Red Dragon. And... Can I can yeah. I interrupt here? Because I I, I I actually thought I wrote the first story about Red Dragon. I, I think it was the news report. Then you wrote the first. Yeah, yeah. So, so I thought. It, so I I did the I did that. I got wind of this Red Dragon, and uh, I, I've Mass got ended up writing his stories about a week or two before I wrote mine. But I did what you can't do anymore in journalism. Instead of ringing Maddie to talk to him strict solely about it, I rang all his teammates. So I said, "Listen, mate." Mark Hughes, What's tell, the go? tell me about Reg Reagan. How do you hear about him? <laughs> so, mate, <laughs> mate, so I wrote this story. So what he was doing, turning up, and, and yeah, you know, I'll fill in the blanks here for you a little bit, Matt, but the story I wrote at the time was how you came out of the 
dressing room as Reg Reagan for the training paddock with the black T-shirt. Didn't have the bring back the biff at the time, did you? No, I didn't. It was Australian shorts. Of, I had one strange of, shorts? I had, no, I did. I had one of the old man's old 70 two, 70s T-shirts on and one of those sort of ball-hugging <laughs> pair of trousers that a principal of a, a oh, school would wear. So, yeah. so I, wrote, I, I wrote about it. And these places going, mate, we've got no idea what's going on. But they say, mate, but it's, so, working. it's so funny. And what it actually did, it, the, the, the Knights loved it. The Wok hated it. Yeah, the walk, the walk couldn't get it, and they said, "Mate, the funniest bit is, is walk Matthew, 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 f- off, it's red." <laughs> and mate, yep. they said red. They said the walk had no idea how to cope with it. No, mate, none of that bull today. This is serious now. F- off. <laughs> You're talking to Red. You're doing yeah? that 24 7. It was yes. <laughs> As Red. Yep. Came Red. Yes. And, mate, you couldn't talk to him. And the players, the teammates were saying, mate, you couldn't talk to him unless you addressed him as Red. My wife said it's the best husband she's ever had. <laughs> <laughs> He's a bit mad. But I'll tell you something, right? So I, I, I'm listening to it. There's an excellent podcast with Pete Carroll, the coach of the uh, Seattle Seahawks, and Steve Kerr, the Chicago Bull, who now coaches Golden State Warriors. Anyway, Steve Kerr was talking about a book that changed his life. It's called The Inner Game of Tennis. But it's not really about tennis. He relates to this guy, Tim Galway, writes everything about how it, 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 and it relates to every, every single thing in life. Trent Robinson tipped me on the. D- yeah. So Steve Kerr was a struggling college player in basketball. Really just feels like he's going nowhere. He goes and meets with Tim Galway after he had a bit of a read of the book. And Galway said to him, who's the player you really respect who plays in your position? And he said, Jeff Hornacek. Jeff Hornacek was a, a, a very good player, played at the Phoenix Suns and New York Knicks after that. And he said, do me a favour, Steve. I want you to be Jeff Hornacek for the next week. Stop me mimicking. Yep, just be him. I want you to go and be him. And Kerr said, mate, everything turned around. And he said, I went away and I thought to myself after that week, how pathetic that I had to be a different persona to actually get the best out of myself. And Pete Carroll said, so you stopped doing it? He said, nah. (laughs) I kept doing it. And, in fact, every time I went through a bit of a slump, I went back to being Jeff Hornacek. Mm. Interesting concept. So how did you... It's the how, mind game yeah. you play with yourself. So it's about getting yourself in that state of being, Matty. And, and that goes back to Blocker's story about the, the getting there emotionally and sitting in the same locker in the same dressing room. Mentally, you've got to put yourself in a place that's comfortable where mm-hmm. you can relax. And if, if being someone else for a little bit, with my psychology hat on here, yeah. uh, being someone else for a little bit just relieves all that other pressure. Mm. Yeah. And it just allows you to just focus on that part. And being Jeff Hornacek, that allows him to just actually get all the dramas out of his own game. Mm. Well, what does he do? And I'll just copy that. Mm. And, and it clears, you, clears your, your thought process up. But, you know, the, re- the Reg one, people, like, <clears throat> when I went out the streets of Reg, Reg was the most offensive Yeah, but everyone loved person him. Because they saw their silly uncle, their old man, yeah. their pop <clears throat> in those characters. Reinventing yourself was interesting because it, in, in sort of jotting some points down on this, I had the Steve Kerr one, but it was really interesting, an interview with Elton John. I said, how did Elton John come about? And he said, because I killed Reginald Dwight. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a mind game, but it, um, it's effective. Mm. So how often do you go into Reg again? <laughs> I say to people, people go, why don't you bring Reg back? I said, no, Reg has gone to a better place, Cessnock. <laughs> <laughs> but do you go into character? Like, no, no. 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 Would you ever no. do it again? I don't think so, Kenty. Yeah. I think the sort of times have changed a little bit. Can we find something else yeah. for you? <laughs> <laughs> you might be joining a block on the unemployment queue. Yeah, it's uh, exactly. 